We're back with more on the breaking news. Former President Donald Trump has received a target letter in Jack Smith's January 6th probe, instantly making his legal troubles once again the top issue in his 2024 campaign to retake the White House. I want to bring in NBC's Von Hilliard from Manchester, New Hampshire, NBC's national correspondent Gabe Gutierrez in South Carolina, who's covering Trump rival Ron DeSantis today, and also joining us is former Republican governor of Ohio and former 2016 presidential candidate uh, John Kasich. Good to have all of you. So, Von, what sort of reaction are we hearing from Trump's campaign team? So far in this first hour, on a, a silence from several of the candidates, Asa Hutchinson, the former governor of Arkansas, who is running for the Republican nomination, said that this should be disqualifying uh, of Donald Trump if he is found guilty of ever serving in the White House again. Nikki Haley, who was also just on Fox News a few moments ago, I want to let you take a listen to part of her remarks. That's why I am running, is because we need a new generational leader. We can't keep dealing with this drama. We can't keep dealing with the negativity. We can't keep dealing with all of this. We've got China that's literally trying to be at war with us. You've got Iran building a bomb. You've got North Korea detaining a soldier and testing ballistic missiles. We need to focus on the debt and the lack of transparency in schools and crime and the craziness on the border. We can't be sitting there focused on lawsuits over and over again. Anna, the difficulty here for these Republican candidates running against Donald Trump for the Republican nomination is the fact that polling shows a majority of Republican voters believe that Joe Biden is an illegitimate president. In a CNN poll from May, 67 percent of Republican voters said that Joe Biden was an illegitimate president. The number of days since January 6, 2021, it's now 923 days. The number of wow. days till the Iowa caucus coming up, 181. Uh, so uh, several of these Republicans have allowed the narrative that Donald Trump has put into the ether for years now to prevail. You know, Mike Pence, of course, who has defended his actions on that day by certifying the 2020 election. He has been confronted by voters on the road just last week in Iowa addressing uh, an angry Republican uh, uh, Iowa voter who said that he failed in his uh, obligations to defend the Trump presidency and to defend the Trump White House by his actions that day. And this has been tough for these Republicans who have wanted to avoid taking this head on because the, the uh, idea that the election was rigged and taken uh, has, uh, has been effectively seeped into the minds of the vast majority of the Republican electorate since that January 6th attack. And, and so, Gabe, DeSantis is there in South Carolina today. He was looking for a reboot of his campaign this week, but once again, he's finding himself overshadowed by Trump. Yeah, Trump by Trump, and that is something that the Ron DeSantis campaign has seen repeatedly over and over again. Now, yes, Anna, as you said, we're here in West Columbia, South Carolina, where the governor is set to roll out his military policy in just a few moments. Earlier today, he filed for the South Carolina GOP primary, becoming the first candidate to do so ahead of Nikki Haley and Tim Scott. But again, now these headlines are coming out about uh, former President Trump's uh, legal troubles. Now, we have heard no comment yet from the campaign, but Governor DeSantis is expected to take questions in just a few moments. And this might be an inflection point for this campaign, Anna, because Governor DeSantis has been reluctant to take on Donald Trump on this issue specifically. Beforehand, he's talked about the weaponization of government. He, as recently as last night, he said that on day one, he would appoint a new leader of the FBI, but he has not criticized former President Trump directly on this issue. So again, we are awaiting Governor DeSantis in just a few moments, as he rolls out his military policy, we expect him to take questions, and he'll surely be asked about these developments on him. Governor Kasich, we are getting some additional reaction now from the candidates. This is uh, from Governor Hutchinson, who we know uh, we already heard from a little bit there by Vaughn. Anyone who truly loves his country and is willing to put the country over themselves would suspend their campaign, is what Governor Asa Hutchinson is saying, who is competing for the 2024 nomination. But um, Kasich, if anything, it seems like Trump is able to use these indictments against him as political leverage. Yeah, it, it's no surprise that he's going to continue to do that on a, a couple points. One is, when you have so many people questioning the legitimacy of a presidential election, 
I mean, that is a that is a really, really deeply concerning thing when somebody cannot let go of power and then they convince their followers that uh, there was a ripoff. Uh, the result that is very dangerous for the you know the foundation of American democracy. I in a we heard earlier somebody was suggesting that you know it's, it's a shame we have to go back to January six. No, I think it's fine that we go back to January six because what happened that day was an effort to try to take take over control of the country by a crazy mob, and to be able to revisit that, particularly with people to seriously understand what's going on can be a can be a good thing perhaps it can it can burst this bubble but on i have to also tell you i am struck by the conversation that i had by with a very intelligent man uh when discussing is there anything that can come out that would question would cause you to question your support of donald trump and he said nothing and the reason is nothing is because i don't trust any of the elites i don't trust the news media i don't trust the government that's what we're facing, Anna, and that is, uh, it's a seminal question in terms of the direction of the United States, uh, over, not just today, but over time. And Donald Trump lost that election. Uh, those people were down there in that capital. I used to serve in that capital, breaking into that place, harming people. And, and now we, we have the whole business of the, these fake electors where, according to this indictment, we'll see how it all plays out, that there was an effort to then overturn this when it came time for electors to cast their votes. It's amazing, isn't it? It's amazing. What's really amazing is that there are people who just simply are in denial about what this is all about. I just would love to think in, a, in the United States of America, we'll reach the point where people will say enough's enough. I know he's got 30, 35 percent of the vote almost everywhere you look, but maybe over time, and there'll be another indictment in all likelihood coming out of Georgia, maybe over time, some of these people are going to say enough's enough. We got to wait and see. You don't even have Trump's competitors in the presidential race, though, saying enough's enough. They're tiptoeing around, you know, attacking yeah, Trump. Crazy. So, I yeah, mean, if, I mean, if you expect the voters to say enough's, enough's enough, voters who like Trump, who want to support him, and yet you don't even have people who are trying to win the nomination and take that victory from Trump, willing to distance themselves by saying this is wrong, how do you expect that to trickle yeah. down? Well, the, 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 you know, look, a leader is somebody that is willing to get out and say things and take the heat. Too many politicians are, are not leading indicators, they're following indicators. They're living in the fear that they're going to make somebody upset. And Anna, it all gets down to what I like to think we teach our children. The principle matters more sometimes, or almost virtually all the time, over success. I would Let me just say all the time. Principle is the most important thing in life. You abandon your principles. Look, when I took on Trump from the beginning, refused to endorse him, refused to go to the convention, endorsed Joe Biden, I'm not calling myself out as a great leader, but what I'll say is, you know what? So what? I did what I felt I had to do. And today, when I look in the mirror, I'm proud of myself. And so is my family and my friends. And more people are coming to the conclusion that maybe Kasich was right. I'd like to see more of these candidates who are at the, at the head of the pack be willing to stand up and say something. And I'd like to see the donor step up and help them. The problem we have now is many people don't want to make a winner. They want to be with a winner. But... Um, we just got to keep watching on it. It's, a, it's, it's just really such a disturbing time. And, and in some sense, I don't want to say frightening. Yeah, maybe I should say a frightening time when we watch what's happening in this country today. Look, we'll survive this. We'll get through this. We'll get on top of it. But it's going to take some great men and women to have courage, speak out, and do some things they wouldn't normally do. There's obviously a lot of people in your party who believe Trump and who, who disagree yeah. with you that this is a bad thing, that he is as popular hey, as he I, is. I mean, think about it. He's actually been gaining ground in the polls. Why do you think that is? Again, they, they're kind of looking at Trump's against, the whole world is against Trump, and he's being picked upon. Uh, but, but Anna, look, let's not over-exaggerate this. We've got a long way to go. We've got debates coming up. We've got these indictments, that this indictment has come out, and perhaps another one. We, we can't think about this only in the present. 
you know, the thing that is so interesting about politics is what's true today is not necessarily true tomorrow. Say you have a breakout star in the first debate. Say you have a breakout star in a second debate. Then things begin to change. The ground begins to change. And then people begin to have a different perception of not only Donald Trump, but Trump's competitors. I am told that there are a lot of people watching in the Republican Party to see who will stand up effectively against Donald Trump. Different in 16, but today you have to stand up against him and stand strong. And if you don't win, at least you have your dignity and your integrity. That's what I think really matters, not just in politics, but in life. Former Governor John Kasich, thank you so much for being with us, as well as Arvon Hilliard, Gabe Gutierrez. Thank you. Thank you all.